Welcome to this video on differentiation. We're going to cover how to differentiate and five uses that you should have seen at level two. We're going to go through each one quickly. Firstly, you're going to start with an equation. Now this could be written f of x, which means a function of x, or y equals. Now both are fine and both mean the same thing. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to use the term f of x. I'm also going to have a graph drawn of the function so that you can see on the graph when we refer to gradients, slopes, and tangents. So when we differentiate this equation here, we're going to go down and that will give us a function or an equation for our gradient. Now, if you remember how to differentiate, you need to multiply the power of x by the coefficient of x. The coefficient just means the number in front of the x. And the second step is we subtract one from the power. So that would give us x squared. So that's how you differentiate. Once you've got it, this f dash x, which shows how you've differentiated it, will give you your gradient function, the equation that allows you to work out your gradient. Now, if you'd used y equals at the start, you would write dy by dx instead of f dash x. To see a more detailed version of how you differentiate, go to the level 2 maths calculus video on differentiation. It's the first one. The next thing we're going to look at is the uses. The first use is we can calculate a gradient at a certain point. So for example, what is the gradient when x equals 1? This is it here. We need to use our gradient function, our differentiated equation, to work out the slope at this point at 1. To do that, we substitute in our x equals 1 value into our differentiated equation. That's going to give us 6 times 1 squared, and so on and so on. If you solve that, you'll find out that your gradient function equals negative 3, so your gradient must equal negative 3. For more in-depth steps on this, Go to level 2 maths calculus video gradient at a point. The second use we can do is calculating stationary points. These are points where the gradient equals 0. And these are significant because they can often be turning points like in this graph here. To solve that you need to remember that the gradient equals 0. So your gradient function here, your differentiated equation, must also equal 0. And then you can solve your equation. So for this graph here, if we wanted to find out what x values are stationary points, we set our equation to 0, we put it into our calculator or into Google, and we solve it. That would give us x equals negative 0.37 and x equals 1.37. Finally, remember that maximums and minimums are another name for stationary points. Maximums are the points at the top here, minimums are the points down the bottom. So the third school is to figure out when you don't have a graph, you just have an equation, whether a stationary point is actually a maxima or a minima. The way you do that is you differentiate your gradient function, your differentiated equation, a second time. So to do it in this step, we do f dash dash of x, which shows we've differentiated twice, and that's going to give us 12x minus 6. The next step you're going to do is plug in your known x values for your stationary points and see whether your answer is positive or negative. So if we substitute in 1.37, say, instead of x, solve this in our calculator, we're going to get f dash dash x equals 10.44. Because that's a positive number, that means it's a minima, which is exactly what's shown on the graph here. If this was to give us a negative number, we would have found a maxima. These can be called concave down for maximas, because it's like a cave facing downwards, or concave up for minima, because it's like a cave facing upwards. So if you want to see more about these turning points, go to see Level 2 Maths Calculus Turning Points, and it will cover the last two uses. Our fourth point today is finding a tangent gradient. Now a tangent, so you remember, is a straight line that touches a curve at a certain point. So we've drawn these today for all the stationary points and for the original x equals 1 point that we calculated earlier. The lines here are the tangents, a straight line with the same gradient as that point that is just touching the curve. The main thing you need to take away is the name tangent because the skill of finding a gradient of a tangent is exactly the same as finding a gradient at that point. For more information on how to do this, see the Level 2 Mass Calculus video Equation of a Tangent. The final use we need to know is that a normal line is something that is 90 degrees to a tangent, and we need to know how to get the gradient of that sometimes. The gradient of a normal line, which I've drawn on the graph here, is the negative reciprocal. That means take the gradient of the tangent, which you know how to do now, flip it upside down in a fraction, or do negative 1 divided by that fraction. So for example, if you remember this tangent line's gradient was negative 3. The gradient of the normal that we have of that line is negative 1 over the gradient, 
So our new gradient of our normal would be negative one over the negative three, or if we simplify, one over three. If you happen to have a fraction for your original gradient, say three over four, instead of doing negative one divided by three over four, you flip the fraction upside down and make it negative. So that would become negative four over three. And that is how you find the gradient of your normal line. So here is everything we've covered today. We remembered how to differentiate. You do that by multiplying the power of x by the coefficient of x. Then you subtract one from the power. There are five uses we wanted to cover as well. That's the gradient at a point. To do that, you differentiate and substitute in the x value at that point. The second thing we learnt was about stationary points. These are points where the gradient equals zero, so after you've differentiated, you need to set your gradient equation or your gradient function to equal zero, then you can solve it. You'll need to remember how to determine whether it's maxima or minima. So to do this, you differentiate a second time, and then if it's a negative number, you'll know it's a maxima. If it's a positive number, you'll know it's a minima. Remember, finding a gradient of a tangent line is exactly the same as finding the gradient at a point, but you do need to remember the definition of a tangent line. And finally, we looked at the gradient of a normal line. This is the negative reciprocal of a tangent's gradient. So that's negative one over the gradient of your tangent. That's everything you need to know for differentiation from last year. And the next videos will cover new skills.